right, let's head right away to the Payless Slickers hotline. He's on it on this Monday morning. He is Miller Cop. After the Indian Hoosiers get the win over the number one ranked Purdue Boilermakers on Saturday, Miller joins us now. Good morning, Miller. Thanks for the time. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. What does, I'm curious about this, what does a Monday look like for someone that's been in college for as long as you have? <laughs> well, right now I'm outside walking my dog. Um, I'm all online right now, which is uh, actually really nice because um, I look at it this way. I feel like I've paid my dues in the classroom. Sure. And um, get, I will be getting my degree, so it's basically – School basketball right now, and it's it's uh, pretty simple. And pretty picking simple up life. dog and picking up dog poop, I assume. Yeah, l- yeah, later today, actually, after practice. Okay. I have a really weird question, Miller. When it comes to, I, I've thought about this with the transfer portal. For example, you played three years at Northwestern, correct? Yep. Yes, sir. So I'm going to guess that when you left Northwestern, you probably had accumulated somewhere around. I don't know, 90 hours, maybe 95 credit hours at Northwestern. Is that right? Probably, yeah. I mean, I was I was ahead in, in my three years. Okay. Yeah. So then how does it work in terms of when you transfer? And I know this has nothing to do with basketball, and I apologize yeah. for that. But Northwestern is an elite academic institution. Not that Indiana is not. Mm-hmm. But how does it work in terms of the hours that transfer, and then as a graduate, do you still graduate from Northwestern? I mean, obviously you're finishing at Indiana, and so many hours have to be with Indiana University. Take me through it. Well, so I did not graduate at Northwestern in three years. So I was there for three years, was very close. You know, I was a couple, really a couple classes away from from being able to graduate in three years, but it just didn't happen. But they're on the quarter system, so their classes, um, you know, the classes are – you know, a lot faster and uh, just because there's more of them throughout the year. And so that, I think, was the biggest um, thing when transitioning from, you know, there to Indiana is that the hours didn't exactly line up because I had to take, you know, a X amount of classes at uh, Northwestern and significantly less more or less classes at Indiana because they're on the semester schedule. And so that kind of the hours, kind of some things didn't transfer because I didn't have enough. And I'm not a pro at it, but our academic advisors, you know, you know, Lorian Price, make sure we're all good with that stuff. So it uh, it all worked out. And Miller, what's the dog's name? Dog's name's Ivy. Ivy Y. Okay, Miller and Ivy joining us here on the Payless Liquors Hotline. What, what kind of dog is Ivy? Boxer dog. One year oh, old. The best. That. Boxers are the best. Yeah. Look at that. Um, let's go back to Saturday. Obviously, the first half speaks for itself. You guys putting up 50, a couple big ones from you in that first half. Um, what did you think the difference was in kind of setting the tone, building that double-digit lead that you guys played with throughout? Well, I think a big thing was was our pressure on the ball. You know, the thing with, with you know, Edie is you're not going to stop. You're, you're really not going to stop. him. He, he's going he's gonna to score. That's kind of what we – we talked about going into the game. It's like he's going to score some, and uh, you know we just have to make it as hard on the other guards as you know we possibly can. So you know that's you know pushing their catches out, making them play as far away from the basket as possible, and uh, you know really making the post entry passes tough to give Trace a little more time to try to you know just root you know Big Edie out. So that that was a huge thing for us. And offensively, it's like. You know, we feel like we're at our best when we're, we're out in transition running and, you know, getting dunks and, and early threes and stuff. So that was really the biggest thing, stops and then run. You had a huge steal there about five minutes ago. It was one of those times Purdue had a chance to potentially tie or take the lead. You were kind of digging down on Edie and got your hands in there. I, obviously, you're not guarding him one-on-one, but how do you describe what it's like just to see his presence and have to deal with that out there? Oh man, it's it's you know there's no one else like in college basketball like him. You know he's he's huge, but he's also so he he's really skilled. You know his touch around the rim has gotten so much better since last year. You know he knows where he catches it. You know whether he even have whether he has to dribble or not, which is you know really hard for defenses and, and doubling. You know in the second half when he got some you know his a couple straight. You know we we couldn't double because he just went straight up. He didn't even dribble. So. um you know, it's it's uh, uh, one of those things where, 
you just try to make it as hard as you possibly can on them. You know what's interesting to me, Miller? I'm going to be completely frank with you. I don't think I'm going to tell you anything that's going to shock you here, right? My buddies, you know, I went to IU, so I've got friends that are diehard IU fans, and they'll watch a game, and, you know, if it's one of those games where you're not necessarily getting looks or your shot is not falling, Mm -hmm. then you always hear the Miller cop is not hitting threes. Why is he out there, right? That's always the the, the knock that comes with a three-point shooter. Uh Um, Your minutes are such that it is very clear to me, and you tell me if you disagree, that your role and what you bring and what Mike Woodson expects of you goes beyond just being a guy that hangs around the three-point line to hit a few shots. Oh, absolutely. What is uh, your role that, that those of us who are not at practice don't understand? Um, you know, my role is something that, that you know, has to, uh, you know, be applied every single day, um, you know, at practice and lifts. Um, you know, I'm a guy who's been around the game for so long, you know, in college and, and also with Coach Woody here for his second year. It's like, you know, I know, I know everything that, that he expects. You know, I've played, you know, every team in the Big Ten a lot of times. I know what, you know, they run the same things every year. The coaches run the same things every year. You know, a lot of the same players, you know, the guys I've played against are the same dudes and have the same tendencies. And, um, you know, so really my role, my job on this team is to, yes, make shots. You know, it's, you know, if I have an open shot, I got to make it. And, you know, I feel like I've been been doing that, you know, when, when the opportunities present itself. You know, no, I'm not, you know, out there getting plays run for me. And I understand that because we got, you know, two pros, all American on our team. And, you know, we've, we've had success on offense like that. So, um, you know, the other things that I do and, and are expected to do is, you know, know where everybody's supposed to be at, kind of be like a, a quarterback on defense, um, you know, always talking, always yelling, always communicating, and uh, you know, making sure everybody's in the right spot, and just being a leader out there. You know, you know, every team kind of needs a guy that, um, you know, just just you know, holds people together, holds people accountable, and and you know, expects the highest of everybody on the team. And so, for me, you know, that's you know, obviously, it never shows up on the box score, or ne- it never, you know. It, it's, it's really talked about, but, you know, the guys on the team and, and the coaches, I truly believe, you know, believe in that and believe in my role and the importance in it or else, shoot, I wouldn't be playing. When I played basketball, there were always, a, there were always like a couple of guys on the team that you just kind of felt like everything was going to be all right so long as they were around. They just had like a very clear composure and understanding of what was needed game in and game out, and it it created a calming influence in the locker room. And a lot of times those are not guys that were your star players. For Indiana, I think people would naturally assume that we're talking about Trace Jackson Davis or Jalen hood Shafino. But my question for you, Millicop, is give me an Indiana teammate that provides that kind of a stability within your locker room that maybe doesn't get the headlines of the others? Um, you know what I'll say is I would say Anthony Leal. And, and it's one of those that, you know, I've got so much respect for him and the way he works and the way he you know, approaches every day. And it's easy for, you know, it'd be easy for a guy like Anthony, and I don't want to speak for him, but I, I just, I, I, I've you know, spoken with him, and, you know, we're really close. But you know, it'd be easy for a guy like Anthony to be pissed off, you know, he's not playing or, or upset and not work as hard or um, do whatever. But he is, he is a grinder. You know, he is somebody on the team who, who leads by example on the court every single day. So it's, it's, um, you know, something where, you know, he knows oftentimes the scout better than, you know, probably anybody on the team, you know, because he's, he's, you know, in there working with the scout team, you know, because so he can learn the the opposing uh, team's offense better. And so stuff like that, it's like you you look at him and go, man, like this dude's working his tail off, you know, not seeing the results right now, but, you know, it's just something that, you have to respect as a as a player and as a man. 
He's played 145 career games. Miller Cop is with us right now. And Ivy, I should mention. One-year-old That's boxer right. Ivy also with us here. Uh, Miller, the court storm happens, and your thoughts are what? Are you, oh, man, I got to go celebrate. I got to go shake hands. I've got to run to the locker room so I don't get trampled. What are your What are your thoughts? Well, I, you know, I was thinking, number one, I didn't even, you know, wasn't expecting a court storm at all. Um, you know, we expected the win. We went into the game, you know, 100% believing that we were going to come out with a win no matter what. And so that was our thinking, you know, for with that. And so after the game, they started storming the court. I didn't even realize it until I looked and, you know, half the court was already filled up. And then, you know, people were shoving their phones in my face. And I'm like, you know, I just wanted to get out of there, to be honest with you, <laughs> and, so, and celebrate it with the team. So, um it, it, it was cool, but at the same time, you know, that's what we expected to do. So when you were at Northwestern, you're on the north side of Chicago, did you ever catch any Cubs games? I went to we, – we went to a couple of the team, and they were pretty sweet in the summer and springtime. Because you sweet. grew up in Houston, right? Are you an Astros fan? I am an Astros fan, but I'm not – I didn't grow up – you know, I grew up uh, – both my parents were from Pittsburgh, so I wasn't, you know – Okay. Die hard Astros fan, so, but I, I definitely want him to succeed. I'm trying to figure out the origin of the name Ivy. My first thought was perhaps the Ivy of Wrigley Field. Then I thought maybe it's that Northwestern is darn near an Ivy League school. And then my safest, which is you have a girlfriend that named the dog Ivy. <laughs> no, I'm single as can be, but, um, and, you know, very, very good answers, um, but all wrong. You know, actually, I was up when I was driving to go pick up you know ivy last year after our season ended i was listening to a uh a tape about training dogs and they were like yeah good names are ones that are like one syllable and this and that and then i just thought of ivy and then boom that was it there you go wow. okay gosh you are ivy's lucky to have you um Simple. guiding uh him around um <laughs> miller we'll end with this the best best pizza in bloomington is where oh man and be oh, careful no. for your NIL, you know, you know. you. Yeah, I don't want to give out any free ads, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I will say? I think the best coffee in Bloomington is Inkwell. Wow. Best I'll say that. coffee. You have been in college a while if you're going with the best coffee here in Bloomington. <laughs> no, right? By the way, what is your major? I am a liberal studies major with minor in sociology. So you would like to be doing what when your basketball playing days are over? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Uh Something I've been thinking about a, a, a little bit here and there, but, um, you know, I have no idea. You know, something, maybe something in media, maybe something in, you know, television, maybe something, um, you know, um, I, you know, I, I have no clue at all. So I'll check check with you in a couple of years. Uh, how about the best restaurant in Bloomington? Best restaurant? Uh, well, my favorite. My favorite, I've got to say, is um, that's one of our team favorites. Maybe not my favorite, but just with, just for the team, Viva Moss. Mm. That's a good restaurant. These are two just answers. Good energy in there. That's all. Just good energy. Hey, there was some great energy Saturday. Thanks to you boys and that victory, 79-74. Quick turnaround with Rutgers coming in tomorrow night. Miller, enjoy the walk on this Monday morning, and I uh, really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. That's Miller Cop right there on the Payless Liquors Hotline. I bet it's good to be Miller Cop.